Um, I'm Carol Doan. I'm one of the probably the few people you'll meet that was born in Vancouver, so this is my home for a long time, although I haven't always lived here. Um, for 29 years, I worked at the Columbia newspaper in advertising, and I just recently left that position to go work for a startup, USD Media, which is embedded inside US Digital, which is a company that builds motion sensors. Probably for the past three years, I've been driven to write, so I write fiction. I have two books that are multicultural fiction and then one that's historical fiction. And so I have two finished manuscripts, one in process, and then I have an agent, a literary agent in New York that's looking at the second manuscript. I, I think of writing as the ability to open doors and talk to people that would never cross your path. The first novel that I wrote was a multicultural fiction. It's about an Asian man and a Caucasian woman. And um, I had to pick the nationality of the Asian man and I just decided he would be Korean because I thought if he's Chinese, then my Chinese daughter will think that this book is about her. And it's not about her, but it's really about an Asian's experience living in what we would call our world. Ceremony? Maybe it was Shauna, she thought. She peered up at Callahan and wondered what it would be like for him to return to the lodge and know the one he loved slept on the other what side the of the room. What the critique group has done is, she wondered who slept it's like each person has their own strength. One person hears repeated words, like you've said that, you've used that person's name too many times, you need to edit that out. Another person might hear um, a misuse of a word or another person would hear the rhythm and say, you know, you need to speed that up, you know, and take out a couple of beats in this exchange because it's going on too long. Or they'll see something that you've got that you need to flesh out a little bit more. I don't intend No, it. I would expect some sort of explanation. Okay, I'll have to figure that out. Uh oh. Well, maybe they did have an I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'll have to make something up. Maybe they, maybe they really did have an argument. I to wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the argument is not we good. skip over the tough parts and we don't get into them. I realized this in a scene that I was writing where there was a couple and they were, um, I think originally it said they had a difficult conversation about the divorce. And then at some point I'm thinking, what does that mean? What actually did they say to each other? And that's a tougher process to walk through how someone's feeling during this conversation. I think that's, that might be something that writing solves is this chance to maybe have conversations that we, we haven't maybe tried in real life, but what would we say if we had the chance to say that? How would we do it? Social media, I got pulled into that because I am raising a teenager and I have a kid that's online and I felt like I needed to monitor what she was doing. And in the process, I discovered that I really liked that online environment of communicating with other people. A lot of people are trying to use social media because it's no cost. You know, the entrance into social media is free. What we try to teach is you have to be targeted with your efforts and your message because there is a cost that's your time. One of the things that I say is, you know, try it. If you like it, keep doing it. But if you don't, don't knock the people who do like it. So, you know, do the things that you like, do the things that you love. You know, I, I'm amazed sometimes at imagery that authors create and how words can create so much emotion. You know, you can, re you can read something and cry and you feel something. I went to uh, Clark College for two years uh, before I transferred to Linfield and I would just be so full of stories every day. I'd come home and sit at the dinner table and just, you know, I'd want to tell everything that I'd learned that day. And my younger brother, who's six years younger, used to just shake his head and say, you are so weird. And the only comeback I had was, I would rather be weird than normal because normal is boring. So um, I guess that's sort of my motto. I, I, I want to be me and enjoy life. And if you think I'm having fun, you know, join me.